doing a last little desert ride because after we're going into the mountains, direction Cusco and Machu Picchu. Are you my ride? Yeah, let's go. It's crazy to think that they built something this big. We think we found the trail, but it's very, very steep. We are Nick and Mathilde, and in 2022, we left everything behind to travel the world with our Land Rover Defender. Europe, the Americas, Australia, Asia, and Africa. We want to see it all. This is day 502, and we are in Peru. Welcome to the next Meridian Expedition. We made it out of Lima. We made it out of Lima to Laguna Moron. I actually came here in 2018 on a motorbike trip around the desert and nothing has changed. It looks pretty much all the same. I remember those dunes, exactly those dunes. The plan is to drive to Cusco over the next few days, spending a bit of time in the desertic area of this coastal region south of Lima and then going straight up in the mountains. We're a bit on the schedule because we lost some time in Lima and we have something waiting for us in Cusco. So we need to be there in time. Wow! <laughs> Where's the thing? Auto inflators, deflators. Auto deflators? Yeah. We never use them. We use them in Mexico. Oh. After three weeks in the mountains and two weeks stuck in the city working on upgrading our dear Land Rover Defender, we could not wait to get back on the road for more discoveries. Our destination, the mystical city of Cusco. But on the way, we have a long road awaiting for us through the desert. We're in the reserve of uh, Paracas, which is a big desert next to the next to the ocean side uh, south of Lima and we're doing a last little desert ride because after we're going into the mountains direction Cusco and Machu Picchu and right here it's a huge reserve just dunes all around desert small beaches by the by the seaside and um, nobody nobody and just one road that crosses and tons of little ones that go into uh, the beach and on the other side it's just dunes so if anything happens here, there's uh, no cell network and it is 22 Celsius right now. Let's go. And at the heart of those spectacular landscapes and this empty coastline, an exceptional camp. We just needed to find a way to avoid getting trapped by the tides and the sand. We are looking for a place to camp. This beach is amazing and at sunset it's even more gorgeous. We made it to camp. Now we have maybe 20 minutes before sunset, so we need to prepare food, install camp before that so that we can eat in the cell. You take out the chairs. Okay. I cook. Okay. 
thanks to Toot. We have salad. And then we have tons of little delicacies we found in Lima. Good bread, I mean for us, it's the best bread we've seen in a while. Good cheese and some tapenade, so like olive makes something. We did a lot of nice camps on this journey around the world, but we have to say that Peru really spoiled us with this one. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice. Uh, we've slept pretty well last night here in the middle of the desert. Pretty cool spot, all alone. You can hear the waves all night over there, crashing and then a bit of wind, but honestly not too bad. Mathilde said she's gonna go for a little run, right? Yeah. And while Matilda is going to do that, we're gonna have a little bit of cereals with milk on this awesome table. Actually, no, I'm gonna go sit there in the sun. Okay, now it's time to clean up the car and then pack it all up go pick up Mathilde somewhere in that direction and then continue our visit through the Paracas Natural Reserve which is incredible. All right, let's go. Okay, let's go get Mathilde. I'm going to guess if we just go straight down this way and go find Mathilde over there. Let's go! Today we still have to finish the crossing of the Pacaras Reserve. We have 90 kilometers left so we still have quite a bit to cover. And then today the objective is to reach the Nazca Line, the enigmatic and mystical Nazca Line. So we're really looking forward. So right now we're on this off-road here. Uh, we slept right next to the beach as you can see here. And now we're gonna continue the whole track until Ica which is the town here at point eight, and then we continue off to Nazca Lines. Let's get into the desert. Ready? Ready! That morning, we planned to follow our track along the coastline, enjoy a bit more dune time before heading to our next destination. But things did not go as easily as we planned it would. The whole road is so beautiful. Honestly, it reminds us of Colombia and La Guajira uh, when we went to the northernmost point of the South American continent without the trouble of the ropes every 15 meters. We're not too sure where to go. This side is going like this. This side is going like this. And on the left, I think Nick's had another option. We're going to check by foot to see what's feasible because it's very steep or very, very tilted. So we need to check where the tra trail is going. Uh, where else would it be? I don't know. But do you think we can drive up there? Up here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll wait for you here. We think we found the trail, but it's very, very steep. Let's see how Albatros does it. I don't know. Why 
What a car, eh? Low range diff lock, easy. Yeah, nice, huh? <laughs> We passed one obstacle and then just above the bump there's no trail no more. It's as if it's been just swallowed by the dunes. But Nick had a road around here. Whoa. It looks mostly like motorcycles are passing around here. Change directions because we were really on a road that was dying out and was getting just dangerous. So now we're freestyling to the next road, which is somewhere over there. But if you can look at an off-road system, we're in the middle of nowhere, going from the bottom yellow line where we used to be on to now the top red line, which is the new route I traced. Um, freestyle, nice. This place is incredible, in the middle of the desert, all alone, little white dunes in the distance, red dunes in that distance, and everything else is just gray desert. Nobody at all, so we're creating our own tracks, as you can see here. These are the tracks we've made, and here in front of us, nothing. This is so cool. And Mathilde flying moustique. That's amazing. It took us a little while to get out of the desertic areas, but following the east we finally managed to find our way to the main road. Not without having to negotiate our way out, a private industrial property. Nosotros vamos a Ica. De Paracas. Soy desierto, yo soy perdido. Eh, por eso, eh, miro esa carretera y digo, ok, vamos a Ica, sí. O sea, no has pasado por otra tranquera, sí. No. O sea, tú estás viniendo de la playa. Sí. Y para acá se después. Bueno, bueno, ¿qué podemos hacer? Pero no lo digas nada. No, no, no digo nada. Yo no soy de aquí. No, no voy a decir. Just finished the 100 kilometers through the desert. Epic. Nobody. We just had to make our own traces. Very cool. We still kind of got lost a bit at the end. Huh? A little bit. We went through this little private field, but we have no idea what it was, and the guy said, sure. Just pass, he opened the gate. And here we are. So tire pressure back up and let's go to Nazca Lines. Time for a quick side of the road lunch now that we have found the main axis again. And we are heading to our next destination. There are places along our journey that can hardly be missed. And our next destination is one of them. It is one of the great treasures of this world and is hidden in the Peruvian desert. The Nazca Lines. Some of the lines are so big that anyways the best way to see them is from the sky. So we're on a mission to try to find the best point of view to launch the drone. So there's like these towers that you can stand on but looking at Google Maps and more or less where the lines are it looks like just above this hill you have a sp spiral right behind and a few other lines. There's no path here, but we're just making our own path. And hopefully, if our calculations and research are right, we'll be right in Nazca Line.
dating back 2000 years, they have been carved by a people that was making shallow incisions in the desert floor, removing pebbles and leaving different colored dirt exposed. We are talking about 1300 kilometers of line covering an area of 50 square kilometer. Perfectly executed. The how is a fascinating question, but what really triggers debate amongst historians is the why, and no decisive answer was agreed upon, religion and astronomy being at the heart of most theses. nice. It's crazy to think that they built something this big. Tonight we're sleeping at the Nazca Lines. And it's a good one because the one we're staying at is the Gato, the cat. So if we look over here, you can actually see. Oof, it's really dark. But technically there's a cat right by the Nazca Lines. The kind sir over here who manages this parking said there's no problem, you can stay here. Nice. And before eating and taking a shower, the obligatory step is cleaning the car because it's the desert and the Nazca Lines trails. It was full of dust. And this is finding the Sahara Desert. Yeah, so much dust. And because we live in three meters squared, sometimes we have to clean it up a little bit. Mandatory dust evacuation. Mm. Hello! Today is a new day. We have just left the Nazca Lines uh, at sea level. And we are now going to Cusco, which is 3,400 meters altitude, really high up. And uh, it's gonna take us 12 hours through these sinuous mountain roads. So off we go to Cusco! We are motivated to go forward. But the reality is that on those narrow roads, we were purely and simply forced to follow the rhythm of our truck's friends. The only other vehicle on this stretch of road. Although our remapping of the engine of the last week proved very useful. Incredible elbow! We had remapped the engine, we're uphill at a thousand ferry meter altitude, and because of the new torque we have, easy. It's so easy to overpass trucks now. And look at the temperatures. They're really good temperatures, much lower than what we used to have on the normal map engine. So we're super happy with this remap. So bad. Leaving the desert and the coast behind us, we climb, we climb, we climb up the mountain range. We start getting used to those mountain roads, endlessly winding across valleys, plateaus and mountain passes. And as usual, in the mountains, there's only one way in and one way out. And when that way is blocked, we're stopped for good. But that does make for good encounters. We came back in the mountains and as usual, in the mountain roads we have... A lot of traffic and always little resellers that come and give you little snacks, little drinks. We bought a little drink and then we're talking here to Juliana e Genesis. Genesis. <laughs> Hola, yo me llamo Juliana. Yo soy Mucho gusto, Juliana. ¿Y tú? 
Yo me llamo Genesis. Uh -huh. Y son súper lindas. Podemos aprender en quechua. ¿Cómo se dice uh, yo me llamo? Nuja Suteikan. ¿Y más sutik? Y más sutikan Nico. Difícil. Se dice gato y perro. perro. We continue our journey toward Cusco through the high plateaus and slowly make our ways to the valleys of Cusco. In the end, it would have taken us two full days of driving to reach the historical capital of Peru, which was also the capital of the Inca Empire before the conquest of the Spanish. That was a long drive. Where are these guys going? They're so cute! I think they're on their side of the road. Yeah. Yeah, it's and steep. steep people left and right. Gotta be careful. This is Cusco. But we made it to Cusco, which is awesome. Very, very excited. We just made it to Cusco and we found a place to park the car in a free street and it's packed with other landers and they're all from Brazil. Like, all of them. And there's two defenders. Uh, this one is definitely one a 300 here. Yeah. And then there's one more over there. Amazing. Cool. Yeah, it promises a nice day. In this yeah. Place. Now we're going to meet up with Cody and Olivia that are already in town. Look, the other defender is here. So, uh, hay una hora de yeah, So long. We lost your Sorry. life. <laughs> no, that's okay. I know. Say goodbye. Buy a new set. That night we said goodbye to our friend Cody and Olivia who were heading south and we continued exploring the city on our own for the day. I actually already came to Cusco in 2018 on a motorbike trip so these streets are familiar and it's hilarious walking through them, finding the hostel, finding the market, finding the square, just finding a lot of places again. So I'm really excited to bring Matilda around and the first place we're going to is the market. Oh. I got one extra hole for one soul, which is uh, 20 cents euros. Not bad. Got Albatross finally after a year we were saying we wanted a new carpet. We got him a new carpet. Let's see. Look at it. We finished the visit of Cusco. It's really cool. Now we're just above Cusco. We put the Albatross to storage for one week. We cleaned it up entirely and we're going to pack up our bags. 
We're going for uh, one week exactly, Thursday to Thursday, to the USA because we have a wedding and we cannot miss our good friend's wedding. We had to stop the albatross, get to the USA. It's going to be tons of fun. We, we can't wait to get back and continue the journey though in Peru, Bolivia and all the rest of South America. This is just a short recap of our week in the USA. That was an incredible one week in the USA. So many friends, so many people, so many events. Honestly, an amazing time. And we're back in Cusco. Now we're going to pack up again and back on the road for a new week in Peru. And after that, Bolivia. Yes, let's go, can't wait. And normally there should be no more interruptions until Ushuaia, except if Albatross needs maintenance. So much sand, it's piling up right here on the window. It's mini dunes! Mini dunes on the window, yeah! <laughs>